All right, so today we're just making a video on how to load a mini excavator properly on a tilt deck trailer. Right here, we got a split tilt. So we got 16 foot of tilt in the back, four foot of deck in the front, which makes it really easy for putting your buckets up front, strapping those down so you don't got to keep it in your bucket. But uh, we'll get to loading it up. So what we like to do while loading the excavator up is turn the cab sideways so and open the door so we can see the tracks clearly. Make sure we're on the center of the trailer because sometimes it is kind of a tight fit. And we like to put the blade up front so we can strap that down in the front and then pull from the body or the tracks in the back. And a lot of people, it just depends on your trailer whether you want to put uh, the arm in the front or the back. We prefer to put the, the arm in the back with our setup, just cause the weight is displaced properly and it works a lot better. You want 60, 40 weight displacement. So we'll get to strapping it down and show you the proper way to be strapping it down. So what we like to do is have the binders on the driver's side so you can see in your mirror while you're driving. Make sure the binders are still secure and nothing's loose. So that's just a lot better for making sure you're safely towing and everything's secure. All right, so for the front, we got a chain coming across the deck here. Three little chain loops there. I like to go through the blade. Connection point on both sides. It's not, this is too fat to hook onto, so we just wrap the chain through, hook back onto itself. And then uh, through the loop, back over here. Same thing on this side. And uh, these are, we got two different types of bait, uh, ratcheting chain binders. Uh, these are our new ones. Got them on Amazon, but uh, they're a lot nicer than the ones we bought before. The other ones are these ones over here. They're a little bit cheaper, but uh, the actual ratcheting part can get stuck in the way. That one folds out of the way. These ones are a little bit heavier duty. They're 3 8 to half inch binders. And these ones are 5 16 to 3 8 But those ones are super hard to break in. They get stuck all the time. And you just had to keep spraying WD-40 and keep working on them. But these ones, we've had good luck with them so far. A lot happier with them. We'll pull the slack tight over here. And then uh, start racking them down. They have like an in and an out. And then like a neutral. So you can get them kind of tight just with your hand first too. Makes it a lot faster. Down. A lot smoother. The other ones you have to fight a lot and they'd want to twist up on themselves. Makes it a lot faster, a lot easier. And once you get it snug, fold it out of the way, wrap it in slack. Right over the top. Enough.
and that's that's the front. And then to the back. Uh, I like to the big hook point back here. up on the square parts if you were to do it through there. beat up your trailer pretty quick we realized that so instead of having to replace that board we started doing this since it's a smaller excavator and it's kind of out of the way it's not sticking out not super tall and uh just run through the, the strap through kind of like we did for the bucket just go through here and i set the bucket in line with the D rings. Just keep the arm from swaying back and forth, keep everything from loosening up over time. And uh, pretty much completes chaining down your main excavator. There's thousands of ways to do it, but this is what we do. So when you're strapping it down, you can also use these points right here. But what you'll run into is, well, we bent this one because we were just hooking it right on like that instead of looping it through. I don't think it really would have been if we were looping it but since it fit, we were just hooking it on there, kind of bent that. With those bigger binders too, we can kind of overload it, bend that piece. But another reason we don't really like to do this anymore is because the chains can rub on the side of your tracks here, a little more wear. It might be better just because it's, you know, pulling the tracks out, but same thing with that. I think it's all good to do it that way. And then the reason we start strapping this arm down is just because you want five points of contact when you're loading so you got two up there two right here and then just strap this down it's your fifth so this is definitely the best way to do it you won't run into any issues of anything falling off your trailer anything getting loose or moving around while you're towing you don't want to wear out the bearings on the machine so this is definitely the best way to do it for our setup this is the best way we found to have the weight displacement Toe's pretty good, got the right amount of tongue weight, right amount of tail weight, not fishtail and everything's working great. So this is the way we like to do it. So one last thing is you just wanna make sure that all your compartments and your door is locked and closed because when you're towing, if this machine was turned around or something, it wasn't latched, wasn't locked, catch the wind, your door's gonna fling open, you're gonna break your glass it's going to be all over the highway and you really don't want to deal with that uh, we know somebody who had that happen to them glass all over the road it's an expensive fix right there that you could easily avoid so just make sure all your doors and compartments are locked up and you'll be good to go